All right, hi everyone, and welcome back to this tutorial. In this video, I wanna talk a bit more about dependency injection in Spring Boot and how you can control which kind of bean you wanna inject into one of your components if there are multiple that might work. So one thing you might be wondering so far is, what the heck do we even have this data source for? It really just delegates every call that you make or currently the service delegates every call that you make to this data source. So why this additional layer? Well, as always, when you have an interface like this bank data source here, it's because you wanna have potentially different implementations for this. So here, for instance, you might have a bank data source that fetches your banks from a database. You might have a mock data source like the one we currently have, or you might retrieve banks from the network. So there are different ways that this data source might do its job. And really you don't wanna couple yourself to a specific implementation. And also I just wanna show you how you can inject one specific implementation of a bean if there are multiple of the same type. So here, let's say we have another data source and we're actually gonna do something fun and get them from the network. So in this case, from the New Boston uh, chain. So we're gonna look at one of the banks and get the actual list from one of the servers. But for now, let's just create the class here and let's just call it network data source. And of course, this one should implement our bank data source interface. So again, in Kotlin, we just use a colon and this means both implement for an interface as well as extends for an abstract class or another class. Then we have to implement all its methods. So for now, I'm not gonna go through all of them. So we're gonna use only the retrieve banks method, but we're gonna do this later. So for now, I'm just gonna annotate this class just like the mock data source with the add repository annotation. So now something interesting happens because we have two different implementations of this bank data source interface. And if you think back in our bank service, we're just telling Spring Boot to give us an implementation of this bank data source interface. So let's try to run our application and see what happens. All right, so as you can see, the application is no longer able to start successfully. And that's not a surprise because Spring Boot doesn't know which of those two implementations you actually wanna have here. So it's gonna tell you there are two different implementations found, the mock bank data source and the network data source. And it also tells you that the bank service required a single bean, but two were found. And it even tells you what you might do to prevent this situation. So we can mark one of them as primary, so that would just then be the default one. So if you say nothing more and just say, give me an object of type bank data source, it would choose the one with the primary annotation. You can also allow the consumer, so in this case, the bank service, to accept multiple beans, but we don't want this here. Or you can use the add qualifier annotation. And this is what we're gonna do in this video. So I'm gonna close this up for now. And now one way to solve this is we can go into our network data source and on the repository annotation, we can actually provide an argument here, which then acts as the qualifier for this bean. So I'm gonna say this is our network repository or a network data source. And then in the bank service, I can now use the qualifier annotation, just like Spring would suggest it. And then in here, I'm gonna again use this uh, qualifier string to tell Spring Boot which kind of bank data source bean I'm interested in here. And for this one, I'm also gonna disable the hints because the value is just not really um, a very useful hint. And then let's try to run our application again. And now it should fetch the network data source based on this qualifier here. So now if we check the startup, it now says again, Tomcat started on port 9000 and the application started successfully. All right, and we can also verify that it's actually using this data source now if you want. So by going to our application on port 9000 to API slash banks, and then of course it will give us an internal server error just because the network data source doesn't actually implement any of its methods. So it's gonna run into this to do method and this will just throw an exception. And in fact, you can also see it down here. For now, I'm just gonna um, stop this and close it down here. 
So now let's actually make this work by connecting to one of the banks in the new Boston chain and just retrieving the list of banks from there. So we're gonna make a request to the network and in fact, we're gonna call the endpoint that you saw in one of the first videos, if you recall, just very briefly. We looked at the newboston.com and in this um, documentation here, you can see there's the documentation for the bank's endpoint um, of one of the banks. And so there you can retrieve the list of the actual banks in the network. So what we can do is we can take one of those banks and in fact, I'm gonna use the one that's also currently um, recommended, let's say for the network. And that's the one running on this IP address. So if I enter this into the browser and call the bank endpoint, you can see I get a list here of all the banks that it knows of, which are currently seven different banks. And these are the actual banks in the new boss network. So let's go ahead and make this exact request in our application and then retrieve those banks from here. And Spring Boot actually provides a very good capability for this kind of um, functionality because it's really common. So without any new dependencies for our project, we can auto wire a bean called a rest template. So I'm gonna also call the variable here rest template and it's gonna be of type rest template, which is really Spring Boot's way of making rest requests. And that's really all we're doing here. So this endpoint here is really just another rest endpoint just like the one that we're building with our app and now we're calling this one and this is quite easy thanks to this rest template so in here we now have a bean of this type and now in retrieve banks we can make a request by saying rest template dot get for entity so here i'm going to pass in the url for this endpoint that we want to call and get for entity the get really stands for making a get request and for entity means you want to parse the response that you get into an object of some kind. So currently we don't really have a representation for the response that we get because it actually has this structure over here. So it's going to return an object which has account, next, previous, and then it has a collection of results or an array of results in JSON and each of those has the data for each of the banks. So starting from here, we actually can use our bank entity, which will only take the fields that it knows of. So it's only gonna take the account number from here. It's gonna take the uh, transaction fee and the trust. However, we still need to represent the entire structure. And so we're missing the results part here. And now to map this, I'm gonna say this is called a bank list. And this will be a new DTO, so a new data transfer object that we're gonna use here. So for this, I'm gonna go into our network package and create a new one called DTO because we only need this one inside our, or for our network data source. So it makes sense to put this into the scope. And so in here, I'm just gonna create a new bank list. And so similar to our bank entity, this will be a simple data class and it actually only has one field for us because we're only interested in the results and we can parse this into a collection of our bank entities. And this way Spring Boot or rather Jackson, our serializer, will only take a look at the fields that we're looking for. So here we're gonna take the results, but it's basically just gonna ignore the count, next and previous because we're not interested in them and it's only gonna parse those. And of course we have to use a collection of bank because this is in fact an array in JSON. And then it's gonna automatically parse each, each of these objects into one of our bank entities. Now we will have to adjust something in our bank entity later on, but let's first um, take a look what happens if we do it just like this. All right, so let's first store this into a variable and I'm gonna call this one response. And now this call to get for entity, will actually give us a response entity of bank list. And so with this one, we can say we want the response.body, if there is one. And if there is one, we wanna take a look at the results. So this is Kotlin's way of handling nullable fields. This body object might be null. And if it is, this entire expression will also be null. But if it's not null, we have a safe access to its results field. And we can also again say, if this entire thing is null, 
then we want to throw a new IO exception and just say could not fetch banks from the network. So something must have gone wrong. And otherwise we just want to return these results. So results now, if you take a look here, is actually of type, if it wants to show it, is of type collection of bank. And this is because we said we want to fetch a bank list. So our body here is of type bank list, question mark. This means it's nullable, it might be null. And so this is how we get our list of banks. And that's also what we want to return. We can get rid of this one now because it's already defined here. And then with this, let's go ahead, start up the application and just see what happens. All right, so down here it says we require a parameter in our network data source of type rest template. And this one could not be found. So actually we have something that we have to do for this. And we can go into our application, our Spring Boot application for this, and just provide a bean of this type. So this is quite easy to do in uh, Spring Boot. We can just call this function whatever we want. And there is a so-called REST template builder. So builder. And this method is supposed to provide a REST template. And quite simply, if we just want to take the default configuration, we can just say builder.build and that's going to give us a REST template. So this bean annotation really just means that Spring Boot is going to look at this method and it's going to use that to provide beans of this type to any um, components that request it. So here again, it makes sense to say that you're not really calling this specifically, so you can remove the unused warning. And now if Spring Boot encounters the REST template that you want to auto wire in your network data source, it's going to see that there is a method that's annotated with at bean and that provides a REST template. So it's going to take it from there. And so with this, we should be fine. So let's run our um, application again. And this time it should be aware of our bean here and then inject the REST template. All right, it's starting up successfully. So now let's see what happens when we call our endpoint again. So on our port 9000 slash API slash banks, well, we actually get an error that the URI is not absolute. So what we'll have to do in our network data source is this is not a proper URL or it's not enough. So we also need to include the protocol for this. It's just HTTP. And so let's restart our application here and then let's go back into the browser, refresh, and we're actually getting an error here. So internal server error. When this occurs, there will be some stack trace usually in your Spring Boot logs. So here you can take a look and try to figure out what the problem is. Uh, I mentioned already, we'll have to make a change to our bank entity here. And this is because uh, Spring Boot or rather Jackson will look for JSON properties, JSON fields that have the same name as your um, class fields. So if we look into our bank entity here, we see that we have account number in camel case, trust and transaction fee in camel case. However, if we look at the, um, at the actual endpoint here and what it gives us, it's an account number with underscore we have default transaction fee also in snake case with the underscores and trust. So what we should do here is we can use the JSON property annotation. And this is very common uh, on DTOs, so data transfer objects, to specify the name of the JSON property that you want to parse here. So it's the account number, then of course for trust, we don't necessarily need it, um, but just to be consistent with the other fields and also to make sure that it really stays this way, even if we want to rename this internally in our class, uh, we just add the annotation. Uh, let me also get rid of the hints. And then this one is actually default transaction fee in the API. And so this way now our serializer knows how to handle these. So let's restart our application. And now the entire structure should match the JSON response. So it's going to try to parse everything into a bank list. So it's going to look for a field called results. 
and it's gonna to try to parse the results array from JSON into a collection of bank. And then inside the bank, it's now gonna look at the JSON properties and it's gonna parse the fields with the same names. So let's go back to the browser and try this again. And this time we can see we get the actual data from the network, um, from the actual New Boston chain. So from this specific bank, in fact, and we get the exact same data that we have here. Of course, just a subset of it because we just took those three fields from it. But this is how you can uh, make requests using the Spring Boot REST template. All right, perfect. So this way now you've learned how to make network requests from Spring Boot using the REST template, how to also customize the serialization into an object, or rather the deserialization of JSON into an object uh, using JSON property, and also how to control dependency injection a bit more using qualifiers and then passing that qualifier also as a name into your annotations, such as repository. You can do the same for services, other components. So if you have here the service annotation component or whatever, you can always pass this kind of qualifier to them. All right, so I hope that this was interesting to you. Of course, it's just scratching the surface of Spring Boot, of Jackson uh, serialization and also deserialization, how to handle network requests and some best practices for it. But I still hope you learned something from it. And if you did, please leave a like below. Again, take a look at the links in the description if you wanna learn more um, from, from me or from my other resources. And then I will see you again in the next video for a little recap and conclusion.